But that's why we have to maintain a positive state or a state of faith in our desired outcome or who we are. Because if we do that, then very quickly that day two test or challenge is going to transmute into what we've been asking for that we've been putting in our vortex that's calling us forth through the breadcrumb trail of exciting moments and exciting people and exciting events and activities. Okay, imagine this pathway, right? From where you're at, there's this pathway, this gravel road, this golden road, whatever. And it's leading to this doorway, this portal of your highest excitement. And the path in front of you is the path of total alignment, healing, clarity, bliss, support, abundance, unity, consciousness, self-realization, self-actualization, fulfilling your destiny. That's the path. It's right in front of you. How do you know? Because it lights you up. Every element, every breadcrumb along that golden path will light you up if you don't resist it. If you don't contradict it with, oh, I know this or that from my physical brain who doesn't know shit, remember? This is why humility is crucial to flow on your path and be supported and receive the support and the clarity that you are supported. You will not even see that you are supported if you have the blinders on of I'm not supported in some way, shape, or form. So we want to open that up. And re we recognize the golden pathway to our portal of highest bliss by how each sequence makes us feel when we don't cover it up with a negative definition. So in Bashar's terms, this is, you have to be honest, he says, whether you are the one that's dampening your excitement or if the thing is actually no longer exciting. Mm. This is very crucial. So I'm going to repeat this, okay? I want you all to get this. You have to be honest with yourselves. Let me back up one more, one more step. The formula as he shares it is act on your highest excitement to the best of your ability until you can take it no further with no insistence upon what the outcome ought to be. In other words, staying nonlinear, staying fluid with it moment to moment, but acting on our highest excitement. And then very crucial part of this formula is staying in a positive state, no matter what happens. And this is the same as Neville Goddard's way of saying it is when you've assumed a new definition, like you said, with your job, your, your old job started to diminish. No. Yes. If you would have freaked out about that and you would have collapsed back into fear. Oh, I'm not supported. I got to do, I got to carry it all myself because I'm a victim. Basically we don't want to say that, but that's basically how we're operating. That's how we're conditioned. It's not who we are. It's just what we've adopted. We got to see it, acknowledge it honestly, so we can dismantle those definitions and let the light shine through. Let the trust come back in naturally, spontaneously. But if we maintain at least a decent measure of faith in that, okay, we've now assumed ourselves to be a different person, a different being with a different job, a different life, a different expression that's acting on their excitement, that has an elevated frequency, elevated sense of self-worth. If we maintain our faith when your job diminished, now, it's going to be the bridge of incidents that can look positive or negative in the conventional eyes. But that's why we have to maintain a positive state or a state of faith in our desired outcome or who we are. Because if we do that, then very quickly that day two test or challenge is going to transmute into what we've been asking for that we've been putting in our vortex that's calling us forth through the breadcrumb trail of exciting moments and exciting people and exciting events and activities. If we allow our physical minds to simply use its physical capacity, uh, uh, what's most exciting? Oh, this feels most exciting. And not restrict it with fears and considerations and trust in the path of incidents that will naturally unfold, the sequence of causality that's not of our doing. It's not the thing that we carry. It's part of innately part of the creative power of the universe. And in order to renew, it needs to destroy. In order to renew, it needs to wipe out. You see, and sometimes this will look re real gentle. It will look real gradual. It'll be like ah, da, 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 walk in the park. And sometimes it'll be fucking destruction in front of your eyes when you're asked to stay faithful to the unseen that you prefer, the unseen that's commensurate with your excitement. So you got to stay in a positive frequency with that. You got to stay in faith. When you do, though, day two becomes the day of celebration. Your faith will be rewarded no matter what.
So picture again that road with all of this now known, felt. Picture that golden road into this portal of your destiny. And every moment is your destiny. So it's portal after portal after portal. But it's basically a golden road, okay? The golden thread of your excitement, of your passion, your joy, your freedom, your upliftment. Now, picture putting a big boulder on that pathway labeled, I'm not good enough, or I'm not worthy, or that can't be, or... Uh, but it's kind of scary to go there. That's the most common one, actually. Well, unworthiness is a very common one, but on a more sort of service level, often what we project onto our path is some version of, we. I want to follow my excitement, but I don't. Because if I do, I'll be exposed, or it'll be scary, or it'll be unknown, or I'll lose control, or I don't know who I'll be or people around me, I don't know how they're gonna respond. I'm gonna be ridiculed. Maybe if it doesn't work out, I'll be a fool. We gotta be foolish. We gotta be foolish. We have to be foolish. In this life of third density veiled reality, all we have to go on is fucking faith and what feels like it uplifts us. We gotta be willing to play the fool's role. And I think I'm a prime example of this. <laughs> We have to be willing because that's a sure sign. If you're willing to play the fool over and over and over again, which means you stay honorable with what you know is true for you. You honor it with a straight fucking back. It doesn't matter what anybody else says or suggests, including your own mind from the past, which is still other people. You just think it's you now. We got to have a no nonsense policy field around us. We've got to walk through life with a straight back, honorably knowing what feels the most exciting to us, purely, genuinely. Of course, not harming anyone in the process, but trusting our own process, trusting our own excitement. Because then being willing to face anything, to be the fool, to be wrong, to be delusional, to be ridiculed, to not be understood, to be outcast, to be judged, to be blamed. Yeah, if you're willing to be the fool, if you're willing to stand your ground in what you know is true for you, regardless of outside appearances, regardless of internalized thoughts picked up from childhood and afterward, basically what that signals is that you're more in love with life than you are in love with people's ideas. That's all it means. Anyone who's willing to be the fool, to be the imaginative dreamer, to be the faithful optimist about their own path, about their own connection to God, about how everything is possible, even when the senses and reason denies it, it's a sure sign that your love and courage and devotion to God has now exceeded your love and courage and devotion towards blending in with minds that don't even know that they don't know.